I first became aware of the problems our civilization is facing from listening to Ronald Wright's lecture series, A Short History of Progress. Now, Ronald Wright is an archaeologist, historian, and novelist, and he basically showed us that previous civilizations, which collapsed, and there are many examples, did so for very similar reasons, and those reasons were repeated over and over again. And he warned us in his lecture series that the same sorts of mistakes that previous civilizations made are being repeated by our own global civilization. Now, the first thing that happened when a group of humans moved into an area is that they killed off all of the large animals. That is, they hunted out the easily hunted prey. And then they were faced with a dilemma of if they didn't switch to agriculture, they would starve. So the civilizations that persisted had to switch to agriculture. Now, agriculture is what Ronald Wright calls a progress track, because, or a runaway train, because once started, that's a process that can't be got off. The population increased to the point where people had to move to more and more marginal land, and ultimately, that led to a collapse of the soil, a loss of fertility of the soil, erosion pro problems, in hot climates, it led to salinization, which is the build of salt in the soil, and there were problems with water purity too. The next thing that happened was that the population collapsed in many places, such as Easter Island, collapsed by 90%. And those survivors that um, could do moved on, but otherwise they had to linger as a sad remnant of their former, former glory. But the problem is today that we are fishing everywhere, we're damming every river, we're building roads everywhere. We're drawing water out of aquifers everywhere. We are truly a global civilization. There's no earth to for us to move to. So um, that is the problem that we face as a civilization. drives these previous collapses? Well, I've already mentioned the runaway train, which is the train which is easy to get on, but very difficult to get off. I would also comment that civilization is like a runaway train because our civilization is predicated on continuous and continual growth of the economy. All our politicians say is that you don't need a bigger, bigger slice of the pie, all you need is a bigger pie. And the rising tide will raise all boats and if we can just grow and grow and grow our economy forever, we will, you know, all become comfortable and wealthy. But what that policy unfortunately does not recognize is the world is not growing. There is a finite number of resources such as fresh water, topsoil, copper in the ground, oil in the ground, and those resources eventually constrain the growth. They limit the, the growth, the maximum that can happen. Another problem is called dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are the wealthy people in our society and the political leaders. They absolutely resist change. And the reason is because they have the most to lose. They are also, because of their wealth and power, the ones that can insulate themselves from issues for as long as possible. Issues such as um, food depletion or um, some aspects of pollution. They can protect themselves from those issues by virtue of their wealth and power. And therefore, they will resist change until, really, after it's too late. And finally, there is something called the House of Cards. As Stalin observed, everything is connected to everything else and everybody else. When one part of the edifice collapses, the whole structure collapses as a whole. And uh, no person is an island and no man can resist the collapse of the civilization because to their consternation even people in power discovered that they were as dependent on the people beneath them as were everybody else. But in addition to the problems that the previous civilizations faced we have some more additional problems. We have global levels of climate change which is um, threatening the ecosystems we provide us with our life support we have global levels of freshwater depletion, especially in Asia um, and China and northwest Iran and India and places like that. 
We have global levels of pollution. There are energy shortages, particularly oil, but also uranium is constrained. If we start using coal the way people are proposing that we might use coal, that also will become a limited resource. And finally, there is a ceiling on the rate at which energy can be harnessed from photosynthesis. It took millions of years for the earth to produce enough decaying vegetable matter to produce the oil that we use in only one year. And therefore, ultimately, there is just a limited amount of oil and coal and natural gas that's available to us as a civilization. We've had a bonanza for the last hundred years. We're going to come down with a very, very hard time. And so there are storms colliding. Um, each one of these problems would be a serious problem if it was happening by itself. But the real problem is that each one of these problems is happening at the same time. The calamity is swirling around our head all at the same time. We have resource depletion, especially oil, and I'm going to mention one or two other resources that are being depleted in as well. We have the problem of continued population growth not so much in Western societies, but especially in the undeveloped world, the third world. We have a problem with declining, declining um, per capita fruit production. We are facing the problem of global levels of climate change and environmental degradation. And finally, there are problems with the um, United States personal debt and the potential collapse of the United States dollar and with it the structure of world financial systems, and we have the problem of international political instability. So the first thing I want to do is I want to explain to you what peak oil is. Now, the day before peak oil happens, we are pumping more oil than we ever have in history before. There has to be a sense of energy and momentum and inevitability, the feeling that it can't be as good as this, uh, it can't go wrong because we're pumping more than we ever have. Unfortunately, at about the time when you've pumped half of the oil, uh, you start to decline in the production. Now, this first happened in 1970 in the, in the United States, the lower 48 states of the United States. And the reason for that is that um, the United States was the first country in the world to really seriously develop its oil resources. Its peak of, of discovery was in the 1930s and the peak of production was predicted it was going to be in 1970 by a man called Marion King Hubbard in 1956 and he was lambasted and ostracized and, and uh, criticized and thrown out of his college and all sorts of problems because he had the temerity to suggest that United States oil would reach a peak in 1970. Well, guess what happened? United States oil peaked in 1970. M. King Hubbard was proven completely right. And slowly we, we're beginning...